You know how like newspapers used to be a thing? Well back in the day in New York City they were sold by children on the street called newsboys or newsies. And in the late 19th century, especially during the Spanish-American War, US citizens became much more invested in the news. Before you could doom scroll on Twitter for hours, headlines were a hot commodity and people wanted to know what the hell was going on. When the war ended however, newspaper sales began to slow and newsies had a harder time pitching these less urgent headlines to a headline hungry population. As a result of this, big publications like The World and the journal decided to raise the price of the paper, but they didn't raise it for the general population. They raised it for the newsies. The newsies would buy papers in bulk from the publications and then sell them back to the public at a higher price. Joseph Pulitzer and William Hearst, the owner of the two publications that I previously mentioned, raised the price of the paper by 10 cents per hundred, meaning that instead of the previous price of 50 cents per hundred paper, it was now 60 cents. Newsies now had to sell 10 more papers to make the same amount of money that they were making before. Let me ask you something. Have you ever tried trolling a 13 year old boy? They get pissed. So the Newsies decided to go on strike. Now surprisingly, this isn't the first newsy strike that happened in New York City, but it is the first one to get results. As a result of this particularly rambunctious strike, newspaper sales decreased by over 200,000 papers per day. That's a decrease of nearly 70% of papers sold at the time. After almost an entire month of striking, a month of varying commitment to the strike and drama among newsies, the world in the journal finally gave in and compromised with the newsies. Settling for the same price per hundred, but an added guarantee that the company company would buy back any unsold papers that the Newsies couldn't sell. Victory for the Newsies! Now would you believe me if I said that these children were the source of one of the biggest theater fandoms on the internet? And on top of that, it all stems from Disney's failed adaptation of this story. Well put on your little gray caps and light that cigar, cause I want to talk about the history of this musical and the strange, bizarre fandom that surrounds it. Today we're going to be talking about Disney's Newsies. This is the part of the video where I get to wear a big old jacket and look like a newsie, but sweat the whole time. So, you know, beauty is pain. So nearly 100 years later, Disney decided to make a film about these newsboy strikes entitled Newsies. Perhaps it was something about that pulling yourself up by your own bootstraps mentality that these ball busting boys had that inspired Disney to make it. The film was set for a 1992 release and cast as our two leads were Christian Bale and David Moscow. David Moscow was most known for the film Big in which Tom Hanks plays an older version of him, not the other way around. And Christian Bale was a child actor known for Steven Spielberg's Empire of the Sun, and then nothing after Newsies ever again. This kid had potential, I don't know, I don't know where he went. <laughs> Newsies had been mostly cast, but pretty quickly Disney decided to make some changes. You see, the early 90s was like a really good time for Disney. After the death of their founder, and about two decades of meandering critical reception and very few films breaking even, Disney had a bit of a rebirth in the 90s. The Disney Renaissance, as it was soon dubbed, was kicked off by 1989's The Little Mermaid, the first full-out musical Disney had made in quite some time. Time. I've come to the conclusion that I, I don't like the way that I look in this newsboy cap. <laughs> I, I'm gonna keep it on, but I just want you to know I know I look like a doofus. <laughs> Many people, including myself, attribute this film's success and greatness to two people composer Alan Menken and lyricist Howard Ashman. And honestly, I think everyone agrees that they are the heart and soul of The Little Mermaid. Menken's dreamlike music paired with Ashman's witty and clever lyrics helped craft one of the most iconic animated films of all time. So likely at this point, Disney really wanted to capitalize on the musical success they had been having with their animated films and transfer that success to their live action films. So why not make Newsies a musical? Unfortunately, this idea did not go as well as Disney intended for it to go. <laughs> you see, unfortunately, Howard Ashman was battling the AIDS virus at the time of Newsy's conception, leaving Mencken without a partnered lyricist. Mencken decided to work with Jack Feldman, a lyricist he had met in the 70s at a writing workshop who had also worked with Disney a little bit, most notably on the film Oliver and Company. He also wrote the lyrics to the Barry Manilow song Copacabana, so this guy is legit. On top of that, Newsy's was not cast with singing and dancing in mind, and this is particularly important to note when you realize that David Moscow and Christian Bale are not seasoned singers or dancers. The two were sent into rigorous rehearsals and the score was created around their limited vocal chops. Moscow hardly sings at all throughout the film, but Bale did not get away so easily as he is still left with the triumphant I Want song, Santa Fe. We will discuss this song a lot later in the video, so don't you fret. Kenny Ortega, a prolific stage choreographer, was chosen to direct the film. He would go on after Newsies to direct a lot of DCOMs, 
Disney's most importantly High School Musical and Descendants. Newsies released on the 10th of April, 1992. It flopped. Bad. <laughs> but before we linger on that, let's talk about the movie for a bit, shall we? How does one critique a film with many, many flaws, but such a die-hard fan base? Carefully, that's how. Big disclaimer here, I like Newsies. I think it's funny, I think it has charm, it's got a lot of really cool characters and great actors in it. But that being said, it's not really good. Bear with me here. Newsies is a pro-union, ultimately leftist musical film that follows the fictional Jack Cowboy Kelly played by Christian Bale as a scruffy misfit orphan on the run from Juvie. He's sort of an amalgamation of many real Newsies, but there's no one real Jack Kelly. Many people say that he's most likely based around Kid Blink. He makes a living selling papes on the street for cash and is probably one of the best goddamn kids to ever do it. Extra, extra, Ellis Island in flames! We crash fire next to immigration building. Terrify seagulls. Terrify flight with Fino! He befriends two boys with relatively normal home lives named David, played by David Moscow, and Les, played by the kid from The Wizard. But when Joseph Pulitzer raises the prices of papers for newsies, Jack and David create a union of newsies. <laughs> On paper, no pun intended, Newsies is strong. It has a scrappy, likable protagonist with flaws, wants, and needs, it has a talented cast, and it's got some really well-composed songs. What it lacks is commitment, and I'll explain that more as we continue. But this film is a cult classic, and I think it should be reviewed as such, so let's talk about the main things that people love about Newsies. First, let's talk about the songs. Like I mentioned, they were composed by Alan Menken, kind of a Disney legend. And I gotta be honest with you, the songs are amazing. Each melody is so distinct, memorable, and catchy to the point that each time they're used as a motif in the musical score throughout the film, they invoke a certain feeling. When you hear the melody of songs like Santa Fe, you know Jack is dreaming of the future, and when you hear the melody of Seize the Day, you feel a sense of confidence from the Newsies. They're gonna win! The songs are definitely a standout here. However, a musical is only as good as its lyricist, in my opinion, and Jack Feldman... Well, the lyrics are certainly a weak point for me with Newsies. At best, they can come across as a little clever, but at worst, they come across as pithy, trite, and ultimately corny. And what did I expect from a musical about dancing newsboys, right? Of course it's gonna be goofy. And I'm tempted to agree with that statement, but here's the thing. Newsies hardly commits to that over-the-top and corny energy that the lyrics lend themselves to. Take the song King of New York, for instance, one of my favorite songs in the film. The gang's all together in a New York deli after their their first bout of success in their strike, and they've gotten their faces in the paper. They sing a song about how they are essentially New York royalty because of their success and tap dance all throughout the diner. But something is just kind of weird about how this number is presented. The shots used don't quite cover the choreography, a very big part of the song, and it overall is just not quite as captivating as it should be, given the rambunctious tune and lyrics. Another song, Carrying the Banner, the triumphant opener, is also kind of an awkward introduction to all of the characters and includes this kind of strange nun section. And while I really love that piece of music, the nuns just never come back in the movie. Like, why were they ever there? It's just a weird, obligatory nun thing that happens in musicals. What's with all the nuns? I'm not even joking. That's such a weird trope. What's with the nuns in musical theater? They're just like very present, no? Also, the overlap of Newsies singing different lyrics about finding headlines and struggling to live in New York could be interesting, and it is, it's very well composed. The problem is, I just don't feel that anyone is really actually feeling those struggles. Everything comes off a bit monotonous to me. Something to wake me up. Seize the Day is certainly a fan favorite, given the rallying cry this song carries with it. As I mentioned before, its melody is used as a motif throughout the film, and overall is probably the biggest banger in Newsies. But again, it has its moments where you feel like the cast is just not fully committing to everything. Now is the time to seize the day. Now is the time to seize the day. Send out the call and join the fray. Probably the two most popularly hated songs in the whole film are sung by Meta Larkin, the burlesque performer who befriends the Newsies and helps them with their strike efforts. <laughs> 
She's given two songs in the movie for some reason, and both of them are pretty big stinkers. <laughs> so totally do. Come back, my lovey dovey baby. And could she could be at me? The worst of the two songs being High Times, Hard Times, which Meta sings to the boys in their climactic rally for their strike. High Times, Hard Times, sometimes they live in this sleep. If I heard this song, I would stop striking just to get out of the room. And I saved the one you're all waiting for for last, Santa Fe. Now I want to make it really clear right now that I have a lot more to say about Santa Fe that I will get to later. Please refrain from commenting that I'm a no good hater. I'll get to Jeremy Jordan later, okay? I know, I know. Just let me talk about Christian Bale for a second. In Santa Fe, Jack sings about his desires to leave New York City for a quieter life in New Mexico. I've talked a lot about I Want songs on this channel, and this is Jack's in Newsies, and it's also one of Mankin's best. But not yet. Spoilers, this song is gonna get a lot better in about 20 years, but at this point in the film, it's... Well, let's get the big one out of the way. When I dream... On my own. Why should you only take what you're given? Why should you spend your whole life living trapped when there ain't no future? Let them laugh in my face. I don't care. Save the place. Christian Bale is a good actor, but he can't sing for shit. Thank God he's so good at acting, right? I think the hardest part about watching Bale stumble through this song is that clearly the song itself is quite good. It has so many varying movements that represent his changes in emotion in a super smart way. Lyrically, it's one of the strongest songs in the whole film as well. You can tell that Jack isn't actually a bad kid. He's just had a really hard life and that he's just quite misunderstood. He just wants to get out of New York City and see the world. The song itself, even where it stands, is fire, but it's held back by someone who just can't handle the role. I always find it interesting when non-singers are cast in singing roles in movies and TV shows. Occasionally they can pull it off and sometimes their parts are written in accordance to their vocal skills or short enough so where no one can notice how bad they are at singing. Take the musical episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer for instance. Nicholas Brendan, the actor who played Xander in the show, wasn't really a singer but what skills he had, likely along with some vocal training, were utilized so he could be able to sing a duet with Emma Caulfield, who played his wife, Anya. This song is lovely. You can tell he hasn't been singing for long, but he's able to hold a tune. And Alison Hannigan's character, Willow, is delegated to being sung to by her girlfriend, Tara, and only given one or two lyrics here and there due to her lack of singing chops. But none of this is really noticeable to viewers on a first watch, unless you're a dork like me, because the writers accounted for the fact that Sarah Michelle Gellar, Buffy, can sing. She has a great voice, as does most of the cast, so the writing used that to their advantage. In the case of Newsies, however, it makes you question why did they give this song to Christian Bale? I'm glad they did because it's great, but why? They knew he was cast when it became a musical, so why didn't they write the song in accordance to his skill level? That I don't know, but the reason they kept Santa Fe in is because the whole show kind of falls apart without it. Jack's character arc is dependent on his need to get out of New York City. By the climax of the film, he needs to realize that home isn't just where you're comfortable, it's where the people you love are. Santa Fe sets this all up through some really well-written lyrics and a banger composition. Santa Fe is pivotal to the plot, and honestly, I think it was so good that it would have just been downright stupid to cut it. Even if Christian Bale sounds like a scared middle schooler. Far from the lousy headlines and the deadlines in between. What we have here with the songs in Newsies is a case of mostly really great songs with some very poor execution. While on paper Newsies works, they pushed an insane amount of ambitious music and choreography onto a cast and crew that clearly wasn't prepared for it. There's a lot of promise here, however, and something bigger definitely could come out of this material. I'll get to that later. But for now, since we're talking about things people love about Newsies, let's talk about the characters. We've talked plenty about Jack. What about the other Newsies? Well, there's David and his brother, Les. These two are both a bit more privileged than Jack and the other Newsies, and they invite Jack to their house pretty regularly for dinner and such. Their family is quite loving, and Jack even falls in love with their sister, a romance that is unimportant and barely present in the film, but it's there. David and his family are a nice foil to Jack's orphaned life, albeit 
they are a little bit too much in the film and take up a lot of time. I don't know, they're just kind of there. Other newsies include Crutchy, Jack's disabled friend who finds himself put into the refuge. I gotta say, Crutchy, clever name. <laughs> There's also a Racetrack, the rambunctious troublemaker, Spot Conlin, the fierce Brooklyn gang leader, and plenty more to fill the streets with dance. There's Meta Larkin, who we touched on briefly. I adore the trope of a bunch of troublemaker kids all having a strong woman role model who they all love and respect. It's in Greece too, it's just a very wholesome and funny trope to me. <laughs> Joseph Pulitzer, the villain of the film, is here too. He never sings in the movie, but he does speak with a historically accurate Hungarian accent. You work for me until the strike is over, and it will end, boy, make no mistake without you. Then you go wherever you want to buy a ticket for, away from the refuge, these foul streets. Free. I don't know if his accent is accurate, but the fact that Joseph Pulitzer is Hungarian is, so I'll give him that. Finally, there's Brian Denton, a journalist who takes a liking to the Newsies and writes a story about them. He sings a bit in King of New York, but there's not much to say about him. He's worth a mention, however, because I do think his character goes through one of the biggest changes from the movie to the stage version. But yeah, this movie is so weird. I mean, the whole thing is so tonally challenged. I can't tell at points whether or not it wants to be a comedy or taken seriously, a whimsical musical or a drama. Frankly, I can't even tell if some of the actors even want to be here. I think the biggest problem with Newsies is that it just doesn't know what it wants to be. I mean, it wasn't even a musical when it was created, and the lead actor is clearly ashamed to be in it. That being said, the parts that were good were good, namely Mankin's score. Of course, there are a few flops here and there. Metal Arkin's song High Times, Hard Times even won a Razzie, the like anti-Oscars for bad movies, which means Mankin was the first person to ever win both an Oscar and a Razzie in the the same year. But you can't deny that this thing has some really catchy tracks. So, to say Newsies did a bad job in the box office is a bit of an understatement. The budget for this film was $15 million, which would be about $26 million today, adjusted for inflation, which is kind of a small budget to start with for a Disney film. That said, Newsies did not break even. It actually only made $2.8 million, and half of that was only in the opening weekend. That's... That's bad. That's not good. <laughs> that, that's rough. And a lot of theaters after that first weekend even just pulled it entirely, so Newsies was not in theaters for very long. However, there was a glimmering hope in the distance. Newsies had now become the underdog, and because of its less than success in theaters, it became an easy pick to distribute through VHS. So many kids got to meet Jack Kelly and his ragtag group of misfits through a Mickey Mouse VCR TV. But there was one other titan that was responsible for Newsies' rise to fandom. That was... Kyle Massey from Dazzle Raven. And you're watching Disney Channel. Newsies began airing regularly on the Disney Channel, which means that these boys were able to dance into the hearts of millions of children across America. Oh. <laughs> and slowly but surely, a fan base surrounding this movie began to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. But why Newsies? Newsies is a flawed film. We know that. But what did people like about this film? Well, it's really charming. It's an underdog story about a bunch of kids being mistreated and fighting back against it, and those kids are all like friends and stuff. People like seeing characters be friends and have a good time all while fighting adversity. Also, like I just went on about forever, the music is super solid in this film. Once strike, you watch it, strike, you will have strike, Seize strike, the Day strike, stuck strike, in your head strike, forever. Strike. And I'm not doing this to downplay Newsies as a film, but I think it's fair to say that Newsies is for kids. An adult watching this movie will probably be bored out of their mind at the snail's pace of this thing, the cliches sprinkled throughout, and the real stinkers some of these songs are. But if you're a kid, especially if you haven't seen anything like this before, Newsies is magical. It's a generally grounded story about beating the odds mixed in with some musical numbers and cute boys. What's not to love? But what about the adult fans of the movie? Well, how old were they when they first saw Newsies? You see? Here's my working theory. People kind of like bad things. And I'm including myself in this. I love shit. 
<laughs> and it's not that Newsies is just a bad, no good, unredeemable movie, but it was a horrible flop. And people like to root for the underdog, and not so ironically, this movie about the underdog was the perfect candidate for fandom. So Newsies started to grow kind of a cult following, which is what people used to call stands. And from what I gather, this fandom only grew with prominence as the internet came about, leading to many people posting fan content and having discussions about the film. Even Christian Bale, famous hater of the film said in an interview that he had come around to it because of how much it meant to so many fans. So it seemed that Newsies wasn't going anywhere. People loved this thing. Now, because of this new growth and popularity, a lot of kids wanted to be Newsies themselves and do an adaptation of the film on the stage. A lot of schools were even putting on unauthorized productions of Newsies just based on the script from the film. And I can't find any of these. I don't know if there's a video of one. If you have one, please send it to me. I would love to to see that. I won't review it. I just want it for me. And Disney had done this sort of thing in the past. Of course, they've adapted a lot of their movies into Broadway musicals, but they've also created short live versions of movies just to be distributed out to schools and community theater groups. Some of these are simply pared down versions of their Broadway shows called junior shows, but some of these are exclusively for schools and community theater groups, like the stage version of High School Musical and Descendants and stuff like that. A recent favorite of mine is my Son Pinocchio, which is an adaptation of a TV movie called Geppetto with music by Steven Schwartz. That's so funny that that exists and you can just put that on if you have enough money. So Disney wanted to do something similar with Newsies because of its cult following. They contacted Alan Menken and told him about the idea and rather than sit back and let other writers flesh out Newsies into a full-length musical, he took on the project himself and reunited with Jack Feldman. Harvey Firestein, playwright and actor, was chosen to write the book and thus, Newsies the Musical was born. But before just distributing the rights, they tested out the waters to see if this would really click with audiences. A four-week tryout was held at the Paper Mill Playhouse in New Jersey in 2011. People went apeshit for this thing. <laughs> Newsies was an instant success, and I have to say, they improved just about every problem I had with the film. Disney quickly dropped their plans to just distribute the rights and quickly made a transition to move to Broadway. And it opened on Broadway in the Nederlander Theater on March 29th, 2012. Now, in terms of changes between the original film and musical adaptation, it follows pretty much the exact same plot, with a few key changes here and there. Song-wise, we have six brand new songs in addition to most of the songs from the original film. Pulitzer is given a villain song with the bottom line. Nunzio knows when he's cutting my hair trim a bit here and then trim a bit there. That song is just so silly and I love it. Both of Metal Larkin's songs are cut, thank God, but we're given a new one with That's Rich, which is a much better song. Still totally unnecessary, but it doesn't bother me here and it's really fun. <laughs> There's also I Never Planned On You slash Don't Come A Knockin', which is probably my favorite song in the show. Call me an old sap, but I love the way that Jack's melody floats over this little can-can song playing in Meta's theater. Love at first shot for suckers at least Fun fact about the Don't Come a Knockin' part of this song, it's actually in the original Newsies film, just played as an instrumental when we see Meta Larkin's theater. <laughs> And I find that very cool. There's Brooklyn's here when Brooklyn comes to help out the rest of the New York Newsies, which is such a triumphant song. Whenever I hear that song, I know something like wells up in my heart. It's just so encouraging. There's also Letter from the Refuge sung by Crutchy. I don't really have much to say about this song other than the fact that it's just so sweet and heartwarming and does a really good job at building the relationship between Jack and Crutchy. Speaking of the relationship between Jack and Crutchy, 
Let's talk about Santa Fe. I think what they did to Santa Fe is the crowning achievement of the Newsies musical. Rather than just keeping it the same and getting a really great singer, Jeremy Jordan, on it, they actually changed it into an entirely different song and also changed how it functions in the musical. It's still his I Want song, in fact, now it's the very first song in the show. On a New York fire escape, we see Jack with Crutchy, Jack's best friend in the world. The two have grown up together and Jack tells Crutchy about his dream of living in Santa Fe. They share dreams for the future and it sets up both of these characters very well. We know how much Jack cares about Crutchy. Jack now feels like he owes a better life not only to himself, but to his best friend. At the end of Act 1, however, much like in the original film, the Newsies are losing their strike and Crutchy is taken to the refuge. They've just undergone a brutal fight with the security of the world newspaper and even the cops. Jack runs back to the fire escape where the show began, but this time without his friend. The pressures of being a strike leader have finally caught up to him as he's facing the consequences that come with fighting back as the underdog. He directly has to confront these consequences as it is hit as close to home as it possibly can. And he sings Santa Fe again, but this time entirely defeated. Living in Santa Fe is no longer an insane pipe dream, it's a necessity, one that Jack thinks that he'll never get, nor does he deserve. The song itself is entirely different as well. Of course, the bones of the original are still there, but it's much faster in this version, and it lyrically reflects just how much Jack has lost, despite him starting the show thinking he had nothing to lose. But the biggest difference, in my opinion, is Jeremy Jordan's performance. Yes, it's super dramatic and yes it's a little bit campy but his voice is so smooth and yet distraught and just lovely on this song hey, where does it say you gotta live and die here where does it say a guy can't catch a break coldest take on the internet maybe that jeremy jordan has a good voice but god damn is it true each movement in the song sounds like an entirely different stream of consciousness and it leads to this erratic climactic end to an already high energy first act why should you only take what you're given why should you spend your whole life living crap but there ain't no future even at 17. that is how you turn a good song into a great song these changes to the most important song in the original film makes Newsies so much stronger and so much more interesting. Everyone has seen an I Want song as the second song in a show, but the writers of Newsies said fuck it and made it the opening number and the closer of act one. That's some good shit. I'm sorry, but it is. That's so cool. It's just such a smart framing device for the first act of the show and I really love it. And the melody, of course, is interpolated throughout the rest of the second act and in the finale as well. <laughs> Pretty much every song from the original film is back as well, and they come back with a newfound energy. Songs like Carrying the Banner, Seize the Day, The World Will Know, and Once and For All are all incredible standouts, but my personal favorite will always be King of New York. This song was made to be an act two opener. It picks up everyone's spirits immediately. I mean, how can it not? The tap dancing is fantastic. The song is fantastic. The lyrics are silly as shit. Pastrami on rye with a sour pickle. I mean, who? That's... That's awesome. That corniness and silliness that I talked about in the original Newsies film finally meets the energy of the actors here, and it's just so great. Most of our characters here are pretty much the same as the original film. David is now called Davey, which is much better. And Jack was no longer nicknamed Cowboy because that also made no sense. But all of the Newsies are still here. Some are more important than others, though. In fact, all of the Newsies are given way more time to just hang out and have a good time in this one, and I feel like it lets more actors really shine. Race Track in particular is given a much bigger role in the musical and he's just such a delight to watch every time he's on stage. But the most important addition here is the character of Catherine in place of Brian Denton. Remember that reporter I told you about? Well forget all about him because he's not here. That wasn't important anyway, I tricked you. Catherine is a plucky young journalist who is trying to make a name for herself, who takes a liking to the newsies, specifically Jack Kelly, who flirts with her every chance he gets. The two fall in love, but soon it's revealed that Catherine Catherine is actually Pulitzer's daughter this whole time. She can hear for herself, can't you, darling? I trust you know my daughter, Catherine. Yeah. This is a huge betrayal, but the two overcome their differences and decide to take on Pulitzer together. You just double crossed us, you fought it. You fought it. My father has eyes. The two sing a song called Something to Believe In. When I started writing this video, I did not like this song, but I've been listening to the Newsies soundtrack a lot for... <clears throat> 
research and it's grown on me quite a bit so let me explain. I do like the song itself, at the very least I find it catchy, but I want to talk about why I think this is kind of a cheap storytelling device. I don't think that Jack needed a love interest to make this story work. There, I said it. Now, I do like the addition of Catherine, but I find that their romance is a little forced here, especially since I don't understand why they like each other outside of, like, physical attraction. They don't particularly have any chemistry on stage, they just kind of do this, like, weird movie flirting. Now, I've got a headline for you. Cheeky boy gets nothing for his troubles. <laughs> And I get that deep down Jack is sensitive and an artist, and that's why Catherine likes him, but it just kind of comes out of nowhere in the show. And, um, off the record, good luck. <laughs> Not every story needs to have a romance, in my opinion, and when it comes to Newsies, I find that it just kind of lessens the theme of the show. One of the biggest themes in Newsies is friendship, and I find that that's a little bit bogged down by his relationship with Catherine. They can just be friends. That's cool. Plus, it would make more sense, because Jack's like 17, and are you really gonna tell me that Catherine is also 17? She's so clearly like 25. No one is allowed to comment that it was a different time. That's some creepy shit. I feel like this might be my hottest take in this whole video, but I'm sorry. You will have to devalidate all of my opinions in the comments. Run loose, child! Anyway, Catherine is also given her own song entitled Watch What Happens, which in my opinion is a welcome addition. The reprise, on the other hand, is even better. It's sung by Davey and used to get Jack back into the strike, and it led to one of the most iconic Newsies memes ever. Go and Look it up, the poor guy's head is spinning. More on that later. I also want to mention the choreography in this show because I would literally get shot if I didn't. It's just so fantastic. I literally can't even fathom doing something as intense as these guys, and all while singing so goddamn high. And every time I think that those newsy boys can't sing any higher, they go and change that key on me. Everyone is just so in sync, both physically and musically, in this show, and it really is just a triumph of musical theater. This is what musicals are for. The Newsies musical is not perfect, but it is a fantastic adaptation of a movie that deserved a lot more love. And thankfully, it got the love it deserved. Pretty much every performance here is top-notch. Jeremy Jordan is so fun to watch as Jack. Ben Fankhauser is such a perfectly awkward Davy. Carol Lindsay is such a ball of anxiety as Catherine, and every single Newsie is just bursting with talent. It's no surprise that it took home two Tonys in 2013 and was nominated for eight. But what was the fan response to Newsies? Well, Newsies was a smash hit on Broadway, and because of this, along with some of the key aspects that it shares with the film, the musical grew its own little fandom. And now, this fandom was quite different from the one we previously discussed, mostly because there wasn't really a big fight whether or not Newsies was underrated or not. It was winning Tonys, selling out shows, and doing quite well. It was no longer the underdog. So what did Newsies do right this time in terms of garnering a fandom? Well, in my opinion, Newsies did a really good job at promoting the musical through the internet. Welcome to the Tumblr era. Let me tell you something about theater fandoms. They are... a lot. <laughs> the theater community is one of the loudest and most accepting groups of people out there, and when you mix that with rampant internet oversharing and out-of-date memes and references, you get a lot of cringe. But there's something oddly charming about that, and I'm sure many of you would agree, but just prepare yourself for a lot of wince-worthy material. The Newsies fandom, or fanzies, which I will not be calling them, suffice it to say had grown quite a bit. Remember how I said there was a lot of Newsies fan conversation happening over the internet? Well, imagine that, but with younger people who had grown up with the internet their entire life. On top of that, something I think the Newsies team was really smart about was creating a lot of internet-exclusive content of just the actors hanging out and having a good time backstage. Like I said, people like seeing friends just have a good time, and these videos were just that. From silly sketches to vlogs, these videos were really popular in the Newsies fandom, and it's not very hard to see why. They are really fun. They also sprouted quite a bit of memes, which I will get to later, I promise. They're 
of course, was a lot of content on Tumblr, a sort of breeding ground for fandoms. I'll be honest, I'm not super well versed in Tumblr, but from what I've gathered, Newsies had a pretty big following on there. My favorite find on Tumblr was Newsiespedia, an unofficial wiki made by Tumblr that was really helpful in finding sources for this video. People dug pretty deep on this thing, fiending over any sort of Newsies content they could get their hands on. Transcribing the script from the 2017 Pro Shot, digitizing limited edition Newsies trading cards, and even getting access to the official production handbook sent out to directors of Newsies when you buy the rights. I'll link to all of those in the description, you should check them out, they're very cool. Also, if anyone has the Newsies trading cards, contact me. And there was your usual Tumblr garbage as well, but overall, the Newsies fandom was something really fascinating and cool. From what I can tell, it never ventured into the romanticizing historical characters nonsense that the Hamilton fandom did, which helps because all of the Newsies characters are very fictionalized. But no, it was just a celebration of a good musical, and that's what a fandom should be. The sad thing about fandom, however, is that it all eventually dies down. Newsies fan content is not what it used to be. Newsiespedia isn't even active anymore, and the creator really wants you to know that. There are a few viral moments moments here and there, especially with the recent revival of the show on the West End, but Newsies fans are getting older and they're no longer as rampant as they used to be. But I'm coming at this from not only kind of an outside perspective, but a dated perspective. I wanted to get a perspective of someone who not only knows Newsies, but is very familiar with the online content surrounding the show. So I sat down with my friend Jack, a self-proclaimed Newsies head, and we talked about some of the biggest memes in the fandom. Here is that. Hello everyone, I'm here with my friend Jack, and he's a little, he's a little Newsies boy, he loves Newsies. Hi, so, I'm Andrew Keenan Bolger, and I play Crutchy in News. I've compiled uh, in front of us, which in my laptop, which you can't see, uh, a few Newsies memes to look at to show Jack, so he can uh -huh. maybe explain them to me. I might explain some to him. Really, I just wanted an excuse to react to some Newsies memes. So let's just jump right into it. Whoa, yeah? wait, before we jump in, though, my head feels a little naked right now. I will. Say. I agree. Let's do like a. Whoa! Whoa! The thing you need to know about Newsies memes going into it is that they're not really memes. Uh, it's, it's really hard to like describe them, but like there's a lot of theater fandom memes that are just references to the show with pictures of their of their guys, you know, the, the Pretty Newsies. Much. So the first one I have here is when someone <laughs> says they are a theater fan, but they don't know slash don't like Newsies. If you want to give like your interpretation? <laughs> yeah, I I feel like you aren't a theater fan if you don't like Newsies, because it's like such a fucking wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you agree with this meme? Yeah. That's saying it's like. Well, no. Well, I think this is more of like a reaction. It's like, oh, you talk to a theater fan, you're like, oh my god, you like theater, and then they're like, man, fuck Newsies, which has <laughs> never happened. In, this is not That's a situation. Not. That's okay, no, 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 no. You remember. Yeah, yeah. I was talking about Newsies in front of him one time, and he was like, you know what? I saw Newsies and I didn't really like it. And I was just like, mm, you're full of shit. Well, it's you like, you can, like you can not like Newsies. Well, I can't actually read this face. It's just kind of like an angry pog. But they know? don't know. <laughs> These are like such awful screen grabs, too. Yeah. Who is this? Do you know what character this is? I don't know, but I think that's the... Isn't that literally the dude that they have on like the... Uh, He's the dude going like this, right? On the That's Mr. Newsy. I think it looks like him, doesn't it? Oh, wow. It? Okay. I think so. So let's rate this meme. I give it a C plus. Because it's not it, a joke. <laughs> yeah, I, I give it like a 5 or 4 out of 10. Okay. It's like, <laughs> Different rating systems yeah, yeah, yeah. already. Oh, when you remember, it's a three-day weekend. <laughs> is it supposed to play something? Oh, well, it did, but I just screenshotted it. Oh. It's a gif, so it's a okay. gif of them. So I got a lot of these memes from a meme account called Memes from the Refuge. Go follow okay. them. They haven't posted in like three years. Oh, wow. Um, well, I feel like this meme is very, like, school-centric. Like, if you're in, like, middle school or high school even, maybe even elementary school. I, yeah. I mean, I have three-day three weekends in college, but, uh -huh. like, I don't know. It's a... It's, uh, you know, it's not that much of a thing. Yeah, you know. yeah, not really anymore. It's I don't like this meme very much. Not, not me neither. Bad meme. Big thumbs down. Why don't you read this one? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> is this? It's from Memes from the Refuge again. He, they say they make all their memes, so. He had a nickel when no one else did. So I don't get this one. I, I don't either. <laughs> Someone I th explain this I thought one. you made this. Well, this is a bad edit. Uh, for a lot of reasons. I think it's like one, one of those... When I read it at first, 
uh, I don't know why, but I read it like he nickel one had when else a no <laughs> did, <laughs> and that that messed me up. Bro. It's kind of like that that like Walking Dead meme. Yeah, it's like a play on one of the like Tumblr edits. You it know, probably is. Where it's like, I, I just don't get it though. Yeah, I don't get it. Someone explain this one to us. I'm sure it's a reference to yeah. the show. Yeah, yeah, I don't get that one. C minus. Okay, this one's a good example of like how they're like not memes because this. So this. <laughs> It's just like they put Davy's face on Captain America and then put a quote from the, from the musical. Yeah, and this so it's like is, not uh, really a meme. So this is the thing with like theater fandoms is their memes are very reference heavy, and I yeah. find that very wholesome. I agree. Uh, yeah. But from like an outside perspective, when like the you know I just find it like not very funny. Personally. No, yeah, this isn't funny. This at is all. awful memes. Zero out of ten. But it's funny because it's points. not funny. Yeah, like it, it, yeah, because how stupid it is that it's also yeah. Well, it's actually pretty. No, it's pretty bad. I was gonna say the Photoshop work might be good, but there's like it's their big awful. block of black just behind his Okay, ear. yeah, that's true. I'll give that one a mm, maybe like, like just a C minus. I'll give it a two out of ten. Two out of ten. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's another wow, okay. big genre in the newsies meme. From what I've seen, is a lot of just like cursed images. Gotcha. Of the newsies that are from like pro shots or something. Uh huh. Well, this looks too poor quality to be from a pro shot, but maybe it is. I think it is. I but, think they just like edited it to make it look like shit. But it's another example of like not a meme. No, you know yeah, it, I mean? it like just this is, is just the plot of newsies. It really raises <laughs> like that's just what happens in the that show. Is and factual. Then the newsies get angry. That is quite literally the newsies when he raises the <laughs> so, fucking you know price sixty cents. Ten out of ten. Yeah, ten it, out of ten. It's true. They right. makes sense. This one's just hard to look at. Um, yeah. I'm like at a loss for words <laughs> for this one. So I think that's the guy from Newsies. Yeah, that's but Andrew Keenan Bulger. But he's like on the Price is Right or something. See, I, like, I, I love memes like this because they're just very um, literal, you know? Yeah, yeah. When you find out something you're excited about and it's like... That is factual. You know? <laughs> I, I'm just still having trouble getting over the fact that this is all unironically done yeah like there's i just my brain can't <laughs> the comprehend. newsies fan is at a loss for words there's too. no way somebody like thought this was funny they all, all overwhelming positivity i you know i kind of find it endearing now if i'm being honest <laughs> i mean yeah because this is literally me when I find, <laughs> <laughs> it, it is <laughs> this is so this, this is... one is a bad crop that happened when i googled <laughs> newsies memes but I think it's way funnier. This is an example of like how <laughs> memes would be done today. Like just stupid ass, like this makes zero sense. Yeah. And it's funny because of that. Like that, that's a good example. So this one, in terms of today's standards, I would give like a nine out of 10. I, yeah, light nine. So this <laughs> Nice. Oh, wow. Jeremy Jordan, <laughs> that is a close up of a close up. So this is our squad. We all have matching profile pictures of the Newsies. So it's hard to judge these memes now. Yeah. Because we're in such a weird era of memes. Uh-huh. <laughs> so yeah, this is, there's a lot of fan oh, art. Oh no. This is crutchy, but like in a modern era. Okay. So like current day crutchy. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, okay. So Hi. this one. That's Davy and... Is that Davy and Jack? I don't know. Is Davy and Crutchy or something? Let's look at it. It looks like Ben <laughs> Cook and Ben Fankhauser. Let's... let's well, this one might be easier. Oh, hi. Really... Okay. When did I start thinking stupid, <laughs> soppy things like that oh, and why? I thought it's... that said sloppy. You like this one, though? <laughs> <laughs> I can't say I do. Okay. This is poor oh, guy's head is spinning. Oh, yes. This I'm excited oh, yeah, for. Let's... See, these are... This is my type of newsies memes. Oh, hello there. A lot goes into making our Tony Award winning show happen eight nights a week. So I'm going to give you a backstage look at the many he's rituals ripped. we have to get he's, he's, he's massive. There's a certain passage in the show that I find a little bit challenging. So I like to use that passage to warm up before the show while I'm getting ready. Go and look at the poor guy's head is spinning. Oh, it gets better. Oh, it gets better. Poor guy's head is spinning. Go and look it up the poor guy's head is spinning. Look at them go. Go and look it up the poor guys. <laughs> go and look it up the poor guys. Hey, yeah, hey, <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Those are great. They used to call Ben. Go and look like... it up the poor guy's head is spinning. Oh, second pair of headphones. Okay. Oh. <laughs> They're vaping. So that's that one. That one's wonderful. I just felt like pulling that up. That's like a big iconic news.
Newsies. Oh yeah. Look yeah. At. Now that we've seen a lot of what Newsies memes are like, I thought I would make a few memes yes. to show Jack, and then Jack could give me his opinions okay. on them. Okay. So these are my memes that I made. Uh, starting with this one. This one's of less. <laughs> Do you like that one? I fucking hate less, bro. <laughs> So I knew that Jack hates Les. He's the most shit character in the show. <laughs> okay, I have more about him actually. Oh, so I can't you, wait. This one's for you. Like if you crush. Me. I thought I thought you might like that one. I like the picture you went with. It's yeah. very uh, it's a very charming picture of our good friend Andrew. <laughs> oh my god! I was wondering if you were gonna okay. Uh, Nuncio knows when he's. Uh, yeah, that one's pretty good. I love that one. That um, one's a million out of ten. Crutchy would have voted for Bush. <laughs> Crutchy would have voted for Bush. I mean, yeah. Yeah. 100%. Clearly. <laughs> I mean, just look just at him. Just look at him. That's a guy that would vote for Bush. If That's I've a guy that him. understands American values. I like this one. Mid- Mid- Okay. Mid- I, all Larkin. That is accurate. That one's off the dome. I thought of that one. If no one else got me, I know less don't because he's four. <laughs> See, it's like another one that's like not a joke. I mean, yeah, you that's right. He he's a four year old. He probably doesn't got your back. Yeah. Man. Fuck less. Yeah, fuck less, bro. And this is the last one. More like Jack Smelly. So what's our verdict on Newsy's memes? This is the last They're one. They're all really shit. Newsy's memes <laughs> suck. I think the the memes from Newsies that are good are the ones you get to make yourself when you're like watching all their, you know, Disney's Newsies on Broadway videos um, on YouTube. Like, there's a bunch of stupid... So, so what you're saying is that the real Newsies memes are the friends we made along the way. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay. Okay, bye, Jack. We're just like, we're just like <laughs> Javid. <laughs> Newsies is one of my favorite musicals, and I, I know it's stupid, and there are so many problems that I have with it, but that's what I like about it. Who says a musical needs to be objectively perfect to love it? Of course, there's something to be said about a seemingly flawless show, but there's even more to be said about a show that is abundant with flaws, but still works in spite of them. That's why I love shows like Newsies, Grease, Jesus Christ Superstar, and so many more. That being said, it is insane to me and kind of rare how much they improved the movie into the musical. And I love that Newsies has such a weird fandom too. I think it's hard to explain if you didn't live through it, but if you were doing youth theater in the 2010s, you knew a kid who wore a Newsies hat. And if you didn't, I don't know, maybe you were that kid. Newsies was the shit for theater kids in the 2010s, and probably because it's like super relatable. It's about kids just trying to make their way through a life that they feel trapped in, and if that's not the most theater kid thing you've ever heard, I don't know what is. I don't know, maybe it's not just the cute boys and the catchy songs. Newsies has heart, and I love that about it. So go watch Newsies, any version of it really. You'll have a great time. Hi, I got a haircut. Thanks for watching that video. I'm testing out new lighting in my room, uh, so that's why it looks so different now. I hope you enjoyed that video. It's sort of a different style than I've been making before, sort of a deep dive history of a musical rather than just a review. So if you liked this sort of thing, please let me know, and I will definitely make more, because I had a really good time making it. As for the future of the channel, as always, I'm working on a lot of new things at the moment, so be patient, and stuff will be coming your way. And thank you so much for watching. Like I said, I linked all of those websites down below that I mentioned in the video and uh, some other fun stuff. So check out the description, leave a comment, subscribe for more. I love you so much. Goodbye. And we will all bake together when we bake. There'll be nobody present at the wake. With complete participation in that grand incineration, nearly three billion hunks of well-done steak.